of Indiana County. 1160, that fellow over there. Why, that's Bob Pollock from the Extension Service joining us this morning. And you can give Bob a call, 349-WCCS or 479-1160. Conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning. Good morning. I had to ask you this because I, I know that you're you're a big strawberry guy. Uh, what's strawberry crop looking like? Has it been delayed, or is the cooler weather that we've had better for the strawberry crops? We always talk about um, they're growing and whether they're whether it's cool weather makes them sweeter or not. The little cooler weather is okay. Uh-huh. However, in combination with the 7.6 inches above normal we are on rainfall for the year, Seven. not not so well. <laughs> yeah. It's they not they don't, the you know, they're seasons. like a lot of things. They don't like wet feet. Uh huh. You know, you probably like to dangle your feet in the water for a little bit, but too long, you know. Uh huh. They get pruny. Yeah. 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 And they're just not as sweet. Yeah, and, and things could be delayed a little bit, um, just because of how cool and mm-hmm. and damp it's been. Things didn't start to grow like they do some years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but, you know, you can influence that some, you know, if you keep them covered. Um, yeah. You know, if you can put row covers on them versus not having that on there. But uh, Well, we talk a lot about when we're planting gardens, we talk about timing a lot. Yes. The timing of the rain. It's not how much rain, but when uh, as much as, 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 much as, as anything uh, that is going to determine um, if you have enough moisture. Uh, it's where in the growing season for each plant uh, is is the sunny weather going to hit or the cooler weather. Uh, all of those different things are factors in it. And so maybe we'll get into that conversation this morning. Right now we have a caller, though. Let's find out what's up. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dr. Bob. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> oh, crap. <laughs> Lost the train of thought Lost for a the, second? Yeah, the, the train just left the station. <laughs> the train left me. <laughs> uh, with or without the caboose or the engine? Which? <laughs> well, we know that, that uh, you have uh, quite the gardening enterprise going there. Can we can we help you? Are we talking lawns, gardens, vegetables? What are we okay, talking? No, we're, t- we're talking gardens. And, uh, Train's back in the station. Yeah, but it's it's left me i'm sorry guys <laughs> that's okay call, it'll come back call back if it comes it back to you okay okay all Thank right you. there you go there you go that one that one uh, sometimes you, you haven't had enough of whatever it is that gets you going in the morning that's so right maybe another another sip of the coffee or whatever it takes you get to thinking about a couple of things at the same time and then the one you really wanted to ask yeah disappears for a minute until the disc cycles again and then we and then we're all right somebody comes back in and says <laughs> what about this um a neighbor came over yesterday uh and uh, turned over the garden of course the garden's been so wet haven't really had a chance to get into it at all uh turned it over in the hopes that another day of sun on on the ground that he turned over is going to dry it out enough that maybe we can get it tilled and get it planted um but that's generally what you have to do, the type of adaptation you need to do. This weather this week has come at just the right time, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it really is pretty timely um, as far as where we are in May. And and usually, you know, we're right in that time frame where we should be pretty good uh, for the chance of a, a freeze or frost. Um, not out of the question yet, but looking at the forecast for the yeah. next 10 days or so, we're so looking pretty good for that, we'll you know. Okay. Time frame and we'll be okay. We'll st- Evidently, the train has come back around. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we can... Yes, it has. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Uh... <laughs> Thankfully, uh, Bob, I got my soil test back from Penn State, and uh, they all showed that I have a ton of calcium, but yet last year and the year before, I got. Blossom and mm-hmm. rot, which is usually due to calcium deficiency, I understand. And so my question is, is there a, a mineral or something that the soil needs so it can conduct the calcium into the plant that and, I could amend my uh, gardens with? And what's the pH level? Uh, very neutral. Seven, seven, one. Okay. 
All right, we're right. You know, and usually for vegetable gardens, we want to be somewhere between 6'2 and 6'8 is a nice range to be in. So you're just at the upper level of that. And that's also why you probably have um, optimum or even above optimum levels of calcium, calcium. in the soil. Right. Because when we use lime, that's one of the reasons we use lime is to add calcium. Um, and depending on the source, uh, it might also have magnesium in it. And then the other big reason we use lime is for adjusting the acidity of the soil. So right. we're, we're making it less acidic, more alkaline um, is the purpose there. Now, with regard to blossom end rot, this is a perfect example of that where we have adequate amounts of calcium in the soil, but at times during the growing season, the plant is not getting enough. Um, and there's times, you know, after pollination, uh, at fruit set, and when those fruit are starting to grow and growing, um, they need a lot of calcium. And so when we get into conditions where we have either saturated soils, uh, like we've had up till now, of course we're not growing the plants yet, but um, if they were in the ground and we had a lot of rain and saturated soils, uh, that can dilute it that can also um, the plant has absorbed all the moisture it can absorb at the current time but yet it still needs that calcium and so it's not taking in as much water because there's a lot of water there the roots have taken it in the plants full of water um, and so it can have a calcium deficiency because of that and then exactly the opposite is true when we get into droughty conditions there's not enough moisture in the ground, and so the plant can't take it up. It wants to uh, because it's respiring, it's losing moisture, um, but yet the moisture's not there in the soil for it to absorb and take in. So then it also doesn't get some other nutrients as well that it may need, but that calcium's critical. So probably what was happening was we know you have adequate calcium there, and then we got into those conditions where it was too wet or too dry, and at those moments in time, and it might have been right during um, fruit set, uh, yeah. we had, and on a tomato plant, for example, or a pepper plant, um, they'll, you know, they're going to have multiple flowers, and they're not going to have all those flowers on the plant at the same time. There'll be some flower trusses come out first, and then you'll get some more as the plant grows, especially on a, on a tomato plant that is indeterminate, so it keeps growing keeps right. setting flowers, keeps setting fruit, grows some more, some more flowers. So you get more of a crop over a longer period of time. But then those can also be, you'll have one set uh, that might get blossom and drop, and the next one up the plant, right. you know, a few weeks later, doesn't get it at all. So is he basically at the mercy of the weather? Yes, uh, unless or... you can influence that, <laughs> you know. So in the dry periods, we supplement with water. Mm -hmm. um, to make sure that that plant can take up enough. Um, and there's a lot of demands on that plant when it gets a heavy crop of fruit on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just, you know, a week, a week and a half of dry weather can be enough to offset that a little bit, uh, upset the apple cart, so to speak, and, and you can't get enough calcium at that time. Um, so leveling those out, it's, it's a little bit tougher to deal with the saturated soil situation, right. um, easier to influence the drier conditions. How's that? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. And then well, some things like uh, yeah. carrots <laughs> <laughs> don't get blossom end rot. No. <clears throat> but there you those same extremes, you know, too wet, too dry, uh -huh. can influence how they grow also. Plus, you know, if he's you, upsetting an apple cart on that garden, that's, that's right. influence everything. Yeah, eventually, yeah, that'll make compost. <laughs> apple carts all over. Um, but that was an interesting question, and it, it, it really illustrated the point that we were talking about earlier. It's, it's the timing right? as much as it is the amount of moisture or the amount of sunlight or uh, the dryness or wetness relative of, of, yeah. of the soil. And with, with some crops, perennial crops, uh, we can have a little more f uh, flexibility there. But mm -hmm. when we look at some of the life cycles of vegetables... Uh, you know, might be 40 days, 45 days for some things, you know, lettuces and uh, some radishes and things that 
can be a shorter day crop, mm -hmm. um, and then you get into things that might be a hundred days or or longer, like yeah. tomatoes and some of the uh, cabbage varieties and broccoli, cauliflower. Uh, not as met, you know, might get into 70 days, 80 days. Which makes it interesting those. when you are um, getting your plants for in your garden, uh, you really should pay attention to what those little tags say yeah. about when they become uh, viable fruits for you. Uh, yeah. I was looking at cabbage plants yesterday, early, late. late. How long, when do you anticipate that you want to be doing, putting up your cabbage or, or whatever it yes. happens to be? Yeah. Yeah. Whether you're going to eat it fresh and you want little bits at a time, or whether you want to process it and you want everything to come in at one time. Yeah. And, and that's the difference with tomatoes, um, picking an indeterminate type plant mm -hmm. uh, that will just continue to flower and fruit over the season, um, or a determinate plant, which is going to grow the plant first, then it's going to set the majority of the flowers, um, you know, within a window, and then you're going to be able to harvest that crop in a shortened period of time and, yeah. and so those are really good for for canning if you want to do it all at yeah make a big mess and do it all at once i like with grape tomatoes to put um to get mature plants uh and then some that are just starting out plant them at the same time yes um, so that they'll come on at different stages right and then yeah. you can stagger um and so with if we're planting seeds we can have multiple plantings um mm -hmm. and usually you know you make your first planting as as soon as it's you know, the soil temperatures and conditions are right to, to get them in the ground so they'll germinate and start to grow. Usually we like to see, like if you're going to a succession plant, um, to plant, let those seed germinate so that they come up and then make your next planting. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we can, if we just separate it by, oh, this week and next week. plant it, yeah, this yeah. week and next week or seven days or ten days later. Yeah. If that first planting doesn't come up yet and you plant the next one, you can end up having it all come up at the same time. Yeah. And you have double what you want. Speaking of time, we're out of it. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. You're welcome. Thanks it's for the opportunity. CCS. Hi, I'm Sheila Hoover, Chief Information Security Officer for First.